Okay, I'm going to do the homework cor uh, corrections on this. Your homework for today will be to correct any of these that you don't have completed, and I'll put one more question on Edmodo as well. I'll expect you to do that too. So we'll start with question seven. With question seven, we're given two rods that are connected and a string joining the two, which is preventing the system from falling apart. So there are internal forces there, two tensions, and we're told that the string acts a quarter of the distance up from A and a quarter of the distance up from B. So what Dominic here is suggesting is that we say that the length of the rod is 4L in each case, and then that means we're dealing with whole numbers when we introduce the moments. So the distance from A to where the string acts is L, and the distance from where the string acts is C is 3L, and that occurs on both sides. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing we do is forces up equal forces down, so we get 5W is equal to the two reactions. The second thing we need to do is take a turning point, take the turning point at A, so we have two clockwise moments, which are those fellas, and the reaction there at B is an anti-clockwise moment. Now that means we need some distances. So if we draw a little triangle here, the hypotenuse is 2L, and we're looking for the perpendicular distance, which is that length there. That's an adjacent, so that'll be 2L uh, by the cos of 45. <clears throat> if we drop a vertical line down there from C, we get a triangle where the hypotenuse is 4L, and we're looking for the adjacent, so that length will be 4L cos 45. Now likewise, on the other triangle, the length from the position vertically below C to B is 4L cos 45, and then the length <clears throat> between where 3W acts and B will be 2L cos 45. That means that my perpendicular distance from A to where 3W acts will be 6L cos 45, and my distance from A to B will be 8L cos 45. So if you put those into the, uh, the equation for the moments and solve it, you get the reaction B is 11, W over 4. Put that value into your forces up equal forces down formula, and you get the reaction at A is 9W over 4. Right. Part 2. Take one of the rods. Remember now that when you take one of the rods, the internal forces will, will apply. So there's a tension acting towards the right at a distance L up the rod. And then at C, we know that the other rod is pushing into the left. So I would normally have an X directed to the left. And because the other rod is heavier, it's pushing that rod downwards at C. So you'd have a Y acting at C as well. The combination of that X and that Y, Dominic is calling an RC. So that's the resultant of my X and my Y. All right, not too important. But what we're going to do is take the turning point at C. And if we take the turning point at C, we need some perpendicular distances. So first off, we know that the distance, the perpendicular distance from C to that, is that horizontal length, which is 4L cos 45. We know the perpendicular distance from 2W to C is 2L cos 45. And the perpendicular distance from T to C is the vertical height down to there. If we draw a triangle in that case, we have 3L, and we're looking for that height there, which actually is an opposite, because the angle there is the same as the angle there. So that means we're going to have 3L sine 45 in that case. Now, when you fill those moments into your formula, you've got uh, the clockwise moment, which is 9W over 4, multiplied by its perpendicular distance, 4L cos 45, it's 2W by 2L cos 45 plus T by 3L sine 45. Sine 45 and cos 45 are equal. The L's cancel, and when you solve for T, you get 5W over 3. Okay, that's question one done. I'm going to do the other two that I gave you, and then you can go back and redo any that you didn't get correct. So, question eight. We have a system whereby we have two rods, and a piece of string connecting both. We're going to look at the entire system, and if we look at the entire system, the internal forces there, which are attention, and the internal forces at O can be neglected, or we can ignore them. 
So look at forces up equal forces down. 2W is equal to RA plus RC. Now we have to look at the moments. And the moments can be quite tricky because we need to figure out where each of the objects are. We also need to figure out what are the angles. Now we're told that that length, that length, and that length there is equal to L. So the question says string is of length L. That means it's an equilateral triangle, 60, 60, and that angle is 60 there as well. If that's the case, and there's a cross here, it means that is 60 also. And if that's 60, and the two lengths of the rods below in the triangle below O are also equal, it means that they have to be 60 as well. So there's an equilateral triangle at the bottom also. Very useful for when we're calculating our distances. Okay, the distances along here. Well, the way it acts at the halfway point, we know that that length is 2L, that length is L, so the way it acts 1.5L upwards, which is why we have 3L over 2. When we're dealing with the moments about the point A, we're going to be looking at that perpendicular distance there. That's an adjacent. So it's 3L over 2 cos of 60 for that perpendicular distance. All right, drop a vertical line down there. The whole length of that is 2L. So that horizontal distance there is 2L cos of 60. All of that length is 2L. Uh, the length from the weight to C is 1.5L, so the length from there to there is just a half L. So that means the distance from the point vertically below O to where W acts is 0.5L, so L over 2, by the, uh, the cos of 60. All right, that means that the distance from that W to there works out as 5L over 2 by cos of 60. And then finally, if the length from A to the point vertically below O is equal to 2L cos 60, then we double that to get the distance uh, that relates to RC's moment, which is where that comes from. Okay, simplify that. RC is equal to W. Put that into your forces up equal forces down, and RA equals W as well. Part 2. Look at the rod. <clears throat> now, the rods are of equal weight, meaning that um, for these to be connected, we're only going to have a horizontal reaction. But for me, I'm going to take the turning point about there because it's quite confusing um, what is actually happening there. Is it going to the left or is it going to the right? I'll leave you sort that out in your own heads and you can ask me when I come back uh, the reason for that. So if that's the case, I'm going to take the turning point about there and I have three forces, a W, an R and a T. We've already worked out the perpendicular distance uh, from there to there. So we're just subtracting um, two of the perpendicular distances we previously got to get the perpendicular distance between O and the weight. That's L over 2 cos 60. We also know the perpendicular distance between there and there. We got that previously. That's 2L cos 60. So that's done. Now what we need to do is work out the perpendicular distance between the turning point to T. Now that's an opposite, which means we're going to use a sine. The hypotenuse is L, so it'll be L sine 60 and we multiply that by t for the moment. All right, work your way through it, and we get root 3w over 2. Second question done. Let's go for question 3.